If you're struggling with ombre on short nails, this one's gonna be for you. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. Today I'm gonna show you how to do a super easy ombre on short nails, and we're gonna add some fun stamping to it because I love stamping. And I'm gonna show you that just doing like one little pop of something, like a stamp or a sticker, can add so much more fun to your nails. And I only decided to ombre my middle finger and I'm going to do a vertical ombre on those. So anytime I'm doing an ombre, I like to typically do that last unless I'm using a glitter powder. Then I'll do my ombre nails first and then the glitter powder second. So since I'm using all the solid colors, I'm going to do my just straight one color nails first. When you're dipping short nails, you want to make sure that you push your cuticles back every single time you dip. I have a really thin layer of builder gel down over my natural nails and then peel base. And typically I'd build my apex with the builder gel before I even worry about doing a dip over top of it or gel over top of it but since my nails are so short I just did a really thin layer of the builder gel didn't worry about doing an apex or anything my nails have a slight apex to them naturally so I just go with that when they're super short when you're doing your really short dip nails pushing like I said pushing your cuticles back every single time it's going to really help you get as close to your cuticles as possible and that actually is what I do whether I'm dipping on long nails or short nails it really really helps me get a cleaner application something else that really helps me keep my layers thin is pouring over the powder I know that some people like to dip their nails in but for me anytime that I dip my nails into powder they just get a little bit thick too thick and they don't seem to apply as nicely as I do as they apply when I pour the powders over. And I pour over for shimmers and solids, and then for glitters, flakes, and foils, I like to lay my nail flat. Now, my thumbnails are really big, and I missed a little bit of the side, so I kind of just like threw some dip base on the on the corner there and applied just a little bit more of the dip powder on it. was hoping for, for the best that you wouldn't really be able to notice it. I could have done a third layer, but I was like, eh, that's a lot of extra work. Let me just do my, let me just do my two layers and throw this little bit of extra in the corner. For for some reason, whenever I do my pinky nail, since I'm filming and have my hands like kind of sitting out in front of me more, I have the worst time <laughs> applying dip base to my pinky. And I feel like I always like miss part of my pinky on the side, but I'm actually, we're gonna be finishing up my nail room. I'm gonna have a room that is just gonna be for my nails. I'm so, so excited. I will make sure when everything is set up that I show you guys, but it's still probably a couple months down the road, but it's making me excited because I'm gonna have a new filming setup. And then hopefully I can actually actually see my nails better when I'm dipping them as compared to just sitting in the corner of my kitchen. But anyways, back to this Manny. I absolutely love these colors together. Pink and orange I am obsessed with for summer and really anytime I'll use those two colors because I love them both so much. We're going to talk about how to do a vertical ombre and what works the best so it's easy for you and you're not going to struggle a ton. Before you even go to start your ombre, you want to make sure everything is set up and ready to go. You want to have your two ombre colors that you're doing or three, however many. You want to have them either in dip cups or cupcake liners. You'll notice in this Manny, I'm only using cupcake liners because all of my dip cup liners were dirty and I didn't feel like cleaning them. So I have my ombre brushes sitting out and everything is ready to go. I apply the dip base over my entire nail and start tapping. Whatever color I tap first onto my nail, I'm going to tap second on the next layer. And before I even go and do that second layer, I let those two colors sit on my nail for like a minute or so to really like soak into my nail and make sure it is totally dry before I go and brush off. Then I'll push back my cuticles again. And since I did the pink first, I'm gonna go through and do the orange first because as you can see from that first layer, the orange isn't very vibrant and I know it's a super vibrant color. So likely what happened was so much of the pink got picked up that it didn't give the orange enough of a chance to shine through. So now on the second layer, I start with the orange and I tap that over the majority of my nail and and then I go in with the pink. Now before I go in with the pink, I tap my finger to the side to get a majority of the dip to fall back into the cupcake liner with that color. I do that because then I'm not wasting so much of it that's gonna fall like right onto the surface of where I'm dipping and I'm also not gonna contaminate my two colors together. So once I do the two layers of tapping, then I go in with scrubbing. And this is something that I do that's a little bit different than I've seen a lot of people do. I do this combination of tap and scrub. For me, it really works the best because I get the best color payout and the best ombre effect. I wasn't getting a good ombre effect whether I do tap alone or scrub alone, but when I do this combination of tapping and scrubbing, I feel like the color payout is so great and the ombre effect actually just blends together so, so nice. So all you do when you're scrubbing 
is take your brush dip it into the color and then scrub along the sides of your nail wherever you have that color so this is a vertical ombre so i just scrubbed the orange on the left side and then scrub the pink into the right side and then you can you're going to see the end result is this beautiful blended ombre effect which if you're struggling with short nails because you know you don't have as much real estate on your nails to work with this is a method i feel like is going to help a lot of people to do this back and forth of tapping and then scrubbing once you finish your ombre nail then we're going to go in and we're going to seal all of our nails with clear dip powder and this is called encapsulating the reason that i encapsulate solid colors as and shimmers as well as glitters flakes and foils for me this just helps to protect the color it helps that if i did an ombre that i'm not accidentally filing into my ombre that i work so hard to get blended nicely i think that it also helps to make your mayonnaise last longer if you're somebody who likes to wear your nails for a couple weeks i noticed that having some kind of base on your nails either clear dip powder or builder gel and then doing a last layer in clear dip powder it helps that helps your mayonnaise last as long as possible once you're finished Finish with the clear dip powder make sure you brushed it off really well some dip, clear dip powders are not as clear as others the ones the one that i'm using from og dip powder is very clear but i still like to brush it off then i go with my activator and i activate my nails and you'll notice these two dips are really pigmented so i wipe off my activator brush in between each nail on a lint-free wipe or you can use a paper towel if you don't have lint-free wipes i did my buffing and shaping off camera and then i go and i spray alcohol on my nails to clean them off now we're gonna go and do this really fun stamp i start with my favorite white bam white from maniology once you apply your stamping polish to the plate you want to scrape it down no more than two scrapes and then whatever way you scraped off the excess polish you want to roll the stamper in the opposite direction so i scraped downwards then i rolled the jelly stamper upwards i took a lint roller and just wiped off the excess stamp that was picked up because i only wanted this little flower and I knew I was going to reverse stamp. I have to be honest, I do a ton of reverse stamping just because I love it so much. You can take your time and you don't have to rush. So if you're somebody who gets a little bit overwhelmed by rushing to do nail stuff and you really want to stamp, reverse stamping, even though it sounds scary, reverse stamping is probably going to be your best friend because you have to wait until the entire stamp is dry to do anything else. And I like to put a little bit of stamping polish on like a nail, nail palette or something. And then I can go through and it's basically just filling in the blanks. You take whatever polishes you want to use as the colors to fill it in. And I like to use toothpicks. Once I finish filling them in, I totally let it dry. And I decided to only use sticky base and nail polish. Once you're ready to apply your stamp, you apply your sticky base over your entire nail. You don't want it to be totally dry. You just want it to be a little bit tacky. Then once it's a little bit tacky, you just literally roll your stamp onto your nail in the area that you want it and then you let it fully dry before you're going to go through and put any kind of top coat over it i want to show you how you can still using dip top coat and using nail polish to top your stamps if you're somebody who can't use gels at all we're going to do our top coating with the dip liquids and we are going to skip the ring finger but we're going to pretend like we're doing it to make sure that our timing is correct so i take my activator i apply it on all five nails i do my heavy coats because i'm using activator because I'm using the OG dip powder liquids and that is what the directions say to use. I pretended like I was doing my ring finger so that my timing would be correct but I didn't actually put any activator on it because that would have smeared my stamp. I go through and I start doing the top coat on the dip nails. I pretend like I'm doing on my ring finger but again I skip over it and I'm going to do the same thing on the second layer of the top coat as well. That's how I'm going to keep my timing correct and still get my beautifully shiny dip nails without having to try to put any dip top coat over my stamp because that's going to smear it and I decided to use nail polish to totally top this and see how the nail polish would hold up I wore this mani for about a week and I have to admit the nail polish held up pretty darn well over the dip I don't know how it would hold up long term if like you're gonna do your you know if you don't change your nails for like every two to three weeks I use the Seche Vite I think it's the fast dry top coat I'll make sure I link that in the description I actually really liked it and I flowed it over the first layer made sure i capped my edges and then did a second layer as well if you're still struggling with dip nails and you're not ready to stamp yet then make sure you check out my dip nails 101 guide that i'm gonna link in the description in the first pinned comment and i can help you learn how to dip thanks nail crew